Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. My video is an Ask Me Anything. We love to put these up. We get a lot of questions and people ask me to put them up again to get their question answered. Uh, we are doing that. A couple updates before I even get started. Cooking show, we did our first one. Amazing, we're actually even gonna be doing it again because I wanna get it right. It's an actual show now and it's gonna be really, really cool. Everything else is going on that we all know about, which is the, you know, the book, the, the merch, the Patreon, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Please check it out. The cigars are doing great. Check that out as well. So on this, I decided to do an Ask Me Anything. And I asked the question, one of the questions actually, are we running out of things to say? Crazy, because I don't run out of things to say. Maybe I just talk too much and that's just me. It is what it is. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy connecting with people. I do enjoy reading stuff. And these give me a connection to you guys. Because I like to hear what you want to know. And I know a lot of stuff, obviously, at my age and being where I went, that means a lot. But I, I also want you to ask, be able to ask the question, so we decided to do that. So we'll jump right in and, and get going. Hey Larry, love your content and respect the message you push. If I had to ask you about anything, it would be improving the prison system. Someone very close to them has been going to prison and it kind of scares them. The single most best thing you can do to improve the prison system, obviously, would be get rid of private prisons. After that, I would have to honestly say it would be training. I got a very disturbing email from a guy who's in the academy for being a correctional officer. And what he told me some guys say, it's pretty disturbing. I'm gonna bring it up one day and, and mention it. And with, with, with stuff like that, it, it, it kind of hurts me. So I don't like that part of it. Larry. What was the greatest moment you can recall when you getting too blazed up for your own good, in and out of prison? <laughs> wow. Okay, let's go in prison. Too blazed up, probably the time I floated out of the prison. But I don't know if that was bad or good. I mean, I totally enjoyed it, so I wouldn't say that. Out uh, a number of times, maybe even not long ago, getting a little bit too inebriated uh, and even doing a video, which I should have never done. Also, you know, if I take weed, if I take certain edibles, I get fucked up. And the edibles hit you when you least expect it. So I think it'd be edibles uh, for me. And uh, wow, pretty wild shit. And I can't even function on weed. So it just drives me crazy. Who's the worst person you ever met in prison? Also, was there anyone in there who you thought was actually innocent that was wrongly put away? The worst person in there, I, I, I was in a prison that there were a bunch of them. There was a guy there that literally killed his own cellmate. Uh, that's pretty fucking disturbing. Uh, maybe he was the worst. There were a couple other murderers and stuff that were just off the charts bad. And uh, it wasn't just the drugs, it was the mental part of it, and they were mental. Uh, yes, I have actually seen actually innocent people in prison. I actually used to help work on their law work. Uh, and when you read them and you, you get deep into a case and you get uh, files deep, you, you, there are actual innocent people. It's not a high percentage, uh, but yes. And it's kind of disturbing because, listen, prison sucked when I was in there, but I was guilty. So that always laid over my head. But some of these guys are just fucking off the charts. I would love to hear how you deal with your past and how you made it right. You know, a couple of things how I deal with my past. I never hurt anyone physically who wasn't in my business, who wasn't in the crime business. So you call it my own justification, I guess. And that's how I look at that. Uh, as far as dealing with my past that way. Uh, I did cause a lot of harm to people, you know, whether it's threatening them, robbing them, making them feel so uncomfortable. I mean, I can imagine that and that's bad. How I deal with it is and how I made it right is by trying to prevent young people from going to prison. It's very hard for me to think I can just call someone and say, hey, you know, it's all over, I'm sorry. I don't wanna bring up bad wounds in people. Uh, I, I want that to happen. If, if I'm approached by somebody who I robbed and, uh, and uh, I would love to talk to them and, and give my condolences, give my sorrow or give my apology personally. Uh, but I, I think it's almost bringing up a bad wound and I don't wanna do that. Uh, so I deal with it that way. Happy coming holidays, Larry. How did time in prison affect your level of appreciation for that time with family during the holidays especially? Love your content, stay safe and healthy. Uh, 
Holidays were a tough time in prison, you know, especially when you have young kids. Prison system don't give a fuck about you. So I seen a lot of crazy shit like that. And I seen a lot of bad things happen to people. I watched the guy get off a phone during the holidays and end up killing somebody. You see more suicides. Uh, you see more uh, fucking crazy shit happen during the holidays. I used to deal with the holidays by making it another day and just moving on. It's hard because you, you still call your loved ones. You got to put up that front that you're tough and all that kind of shit. And I did for a lot of years. But it's tough. Don't let anybody kid you. It's very tough. Hey, Larry, have you ever been in prison with someone you would consider so evil, crazy, that you thought somewhere like 80X Florence is where they belong? If so, why? Thanks for all your great videos. Absolutely. There were a number of people I thought that, and to this day, I think should never ever get out of prison, ever. Uh, because they're psychopaths uh, and they will kill their neighbor or do some harm and it's it's sad It's not an addiction. It's not a uh, uh, Something I think almost is fixable But some of them are fucking psychopaths and and I know they'd kill their neighbor and I don't want to see that happen I don't want them living next to me you or anybody else. Hey Larry. I want to know about shock callers How do they get their position? What happens when one dies or is transferred? Has there been fights over the position? Uh, absolutely, there's been battles over the position. Uh, you'll see it come in and you'll see politics come about. And it goes with any group, whether it's the mob or the uh, Aryan Brotherhood or the uh, you know Black Gorilla Family, Bloods, Crips, GD, DC Boys, you name it, uh, MA, Border Brothers, whatever. There are battles over it. Uh, when they transfer, obviously they already set that up. They know they're getting transferred unless it's a, a, a just a quick move. And they know what they're doing. They're pretty organized, you'd be surprised. Uh, and most people are followers, sadly. Uh, yes, there's a lot of type A personalities, but listen, it goes by their crime a lot of times and it goes by the sentence length. That's another thing that means something. And uh, so there are things that that, that you see that the politics work, I call it. The politics of prison, it's pretty bad. That's all I'll say. What were some of your worst thoughts while in the hole? Hmm. Obviously committing suicide. I thought about committing suicide a number of times. Uh, the other worst thoughts were not when you was getting beaten or uh, they were shaking you down or ripping your shit apart or, or abusing you even. It was that five minutes before you knew they were coming for you to do that. And that's when they open the tier end and you hear the keys coming and you know they're coming to your cell and they don't say, lock up Lawton. When they don't say lock up, you know they're coming in for a beating. And, and it happens and it, it, it used to give me the chills. That was the most feared, I, I, most scared I was. Uh, but totally, totally, uh, being really close to committing suicide. The hole does some fucking crazy shit to you. Believe me, it does some crazy shit to you. And it did me. And uh, I'm glad I'm over that. What was your favorite type of car to use in a robbery? I probably mentioned this before. The most nondescript car in the world uh, could be a, uh, you know, an Acura or some bullshit they had back then. Uh, four door sedan, basic color. Not a high-end car per se, like, you know, no sports car, no car that stood out. Uh, it wasn't about speed because you're not going to outrun a helicopter. As a car guy, not a car guy per se, but as a guy who understood what kind of car to get, it was always the nondescript car, the basic sedan, period. What morals slash philosophies, doctrines do you live by that you've learned throughout your life? Wow. Pretty much simple ones. Respect others as you want to be respected. Treat others as you want to be treated. Uh, that's now as far as morals, I think everybody has their own morals. Uh, for one, you know, uh, sex just with your wife is the, the morals they want to live by. And that's quite all right. I was never in that camp per se. I know it sounds crazy, but no, I'm not the traditional guy that just is going to be, you know, a, a monogamous relationship. Uh, I was never, and I'm not saying good or bad, but that's my own. Those are my, philo my philosophies are, and doctrines are more than anything. My doctrines are definitely treat others the way you want to be treated and respect everybody. I don't care of your age. If you respect me, I'm going to respect you. Plain and simple. And I think everybody should live by that. 
uh, what's good for you might not be good for me. Uh, what's good for me might not be good for you and that's okay. Nobody, nobody should have a patent on what's right. When you say morals, you know, the definition of morals is differently, you know. Uh, I don't look at the morals as the sex end or the uh, certain like that. I just don't. Uh, and right, wrong, or indifferent, it's the way I live my life. But I will respect everybody's right and, and, and way to be religious to whatever religion uh, or whatever they want to do. As long as they respect me and don't stamp on my privileges or my rights of, to be an individual. So I think that pretty much says that all. How do you get motivated or disciplined enough to do what you what needs doing? That's a self-driven uh, thing. I've always been driven, whatever I did. Uh, and I always achieved the very high level of what I did. Because I'm such a determined, failure is not in my, in my makeup. I, under, I failed many, many times in many, many things. But I never quit. So uh, I think you gotta be a self-starter. Uh, and not everybody is. And that's okay. You might be a follower or a worker or something like that, and that's okay. I happen to be a person who wants to uh, uh, achieve things and uh, make a difference. And I think that helps me in a lot of ways. Which feeling is better, robbing a jewelry store or having Christmas with uh, your family? Of course, now it's family, but back in then, I'd have to say jewelry store. I mean, you got a rush that was unbelievable. It was a high that you can't even imagine. Can't even imagine a high. A uh, high, better high than I ever gotten any drug I did. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. At certain times, certain feelings are better, obviously. Who's your favorite YouTube content creators? Wow, good question. Uh, you know, I like Mr. Beast. Uh, I think he's doing good things. I think he puts a lot of effort and time and he comes up with some good stuff. Obviously a great team. Obviously be first YouTube billionaire. I was actually watching a video of his the other day. He's talking about there's gonna be about three billionaires from YouTube this year. I think he's gonna be one of them. Uh, and uh, probably uh, PewDiePie and a couple, maybe another guy. Uh, I think it's amazing that the, that people do that. Some of the law uh, YouTube channels I like because I like the law or understanding the law. So creators, I'd have to say that. You know, I love the girl, Jessica Kent. I mean, she's a YouTube creator that I love. She's a worker and she's hitting the grind and she's good. And she's gotten better and better and better, and I'm proud to know her. Ever see anyone get taken advantage of in prison once, but then turn it around and become respected? Yes, uh, I have, by sticking up for themselves, having a fight, maybe losing it pretty badly, and not telling them. Just going about your way and saying it is what it was, and the respect comes from people who say, wow, the, guy, the guy's a convict. And once you're a convict, you're not an inmate, and you get respect, so I have seen that. Uh, taking advantage, if you mean rape or something of that nature, usually someone, something like that happens, they usually transfer or something like that happens, especially if somebody knows about it or anybody, uh, the cops find out about it. Guards as cops. So this is always portrayed in movies, Larry. Did you have any personal superstitions when it came to your robberies, like not wearing, say, red or seeing an orange cat just before going in, or finding or seeing an up, upside tails penny on the street before, I don't know, or were you pretty much always, I'm prepared, we're prepared, let's get this bread, kind of thing. I'm prepared, let's get this kind of thing, but when I was in the store, I always robbed the clock. I have no fucking, that. talk about superstition or it was just my calling card or whatever it was, a stupid clock. I don't mean a very expensive clock, a little different clocks, you know, they'd have jewelers clocks, certain things like that, and I would take those. I uh, don't know why, uh, it's hard for me to even figure out, but I didn't have superstitions like gotta wear some same underwear or not shave or some bullshit like that. That wasn't me. I was prepared, and I, and I believe in being prepared. Okay, Larry, so you have any pets? What are their names? I have one right now in this room, uh, and that's Molly, my cat. I have two cats, uh, and Daisy. And I know this big tough guy, he fucking's got Molly and Daisy as cats. You know, I love animals. I had horses, uh, Chalk and Hammer. I love them. I had a dog, Brutus, uh, when I was younger. But I, my cats, I love. I travel a lot, so cats are easy to take care of. My one cat's like a, a dog. 
So he follows me around, give me treats, the whole works to her and uh, Molly and Daisy. Are all wrongfully convicted felons compensate, compensated once they get out of jail? No. I know of a man right here in Florida named Bill Dillon, and he did 27 years in prison, wrongfully convicted, proven with DNA. And that young man, he went in at 21, he did 27 years in prison, got out of 48 years old. He was gang raped his first day in prison. And I had him on my show, not here, on a radio show I had years and years ago. And he only got $1.3 million. Uh, if you think that's a lot of money, you're fucking lost. Uh, secondly, I know of people who got out from legal, legal stuff. And the prosecutor just didn't want to uh, uh, prosecute again, but they said they would unless they, you know, dropped any further lawsuits or anything of that nature. So not everybody is compensated. Should they? Absolutely. Everybody should be compensated. Anybody who goes to prison for wrong, wrong conviction, when they see that it's prosecutorial misconduct or something of that nature, should be uh, uh, compensated. In fact, and the person who put them there, doing something illegal, whether it's tampering with evidence, whether it's uh, uh, not giving uh, uh, evidence to the defense, which is known, uh, those people should be prosecuted themselves and they should go to jail because you're ruining a life and you know you're doing it. And that's what kind of pisses me off. Next one, do you ever have nightmares during sleep where you are back in prison? Sadly, I do. I've, I, you know, when I was with somebody, uh, I'm not anymore. When I was with somebody, I would have uh, fucking nightmares where I would scream at night, hearing sounds or things that happen in prison that are still disturbing to me. Uh, I try to bury them. I try to work through them with the psychologist, which I do. Yeah, uh, and I don't know if that'll ever leave me, uh, but you gotta learn to cope with it and you gotta learn to make the best of it. And I think I do. Uh, but yes, it does happen, and uh, I'm sure it happens to a lot of guys who've been in prison like I was. And I hate to hear it and hate to see it, but it does happen. As much as I'm sure it's better to be out of prison and prison life, but do you ever find yourself wanting to be back in? Not because you want to be a criminal again or because you want to do bad things, but just find yourself missing the atmosphere or the people as crazy as that may be. Not one fucking second do I want to be back in prison in any way, shape, or form. Is there any story for, uh, from your prison time you've yet to share? Oh yeah, there are. There are some more prison stories. Uh, some I almost don't want to share, but I think I will. Uh, you know, I've already been contemplating making a Fifi for people because people have been asking, making white lightning, doing certain things like that. Some of the stories that go along with those times, obviously. It's funny because, you know, I could be out somewhere and something clicks in me and, and, and it brings back a flood of memories of usually not good memories. And, and I don't know if sometimes I try to suppress it or uh, sometimes I just uh, go along with the punches and, and I do eventually say it. And that's what I think will happen eventually. How many more? I, listen, I was in for a long time. So it, that's all I can say. I was in for a long time and there's a lot of stories because I wasn't a lay down guy. I wasn't a guy to just give up. I, I was a guy who fought the system every day. I fought for people's uh, rights or people's cases every day. Uh, I fought more of the prison system, understanding the CFR and the, and, and the Bureau, Bureau of Prisons policies that, I mean, it was just something I did. And uh, so I would have to say, yeah. Can prisoners get better food if they say they have di uh, dietary allergies or eat halal? They actually do. I know people, my friend Paulie Tolini, he became a Jewish guy so he can get the kosher meals. The kosher meals were the better meals in prison. So, but that's the only one I saw real. I didn't see people get special diets. If you had to have such a special diet that you'd fuck up the prison system or that prison, you're gonna be sent to a medical facility. Uh, so I've never seen per se. They do have, again, kosher meals in prison and all prisons. So I've seen people like that enough to, again, become Jewish. Thanks for all the questions, man. I got so many of them. And I try to get as many as I can. Uh, and we do this every so often. Uh, people ask for it, and that's why I do it. I'm just glad I can open people's eyes to a lot of things. Uh, I always tell the truth. I tell it like it is. Some people don't like that. Some people have called me out by saying, you know, you shouldn't say that. 
you shouldn't do that. Uh, it is who I am. I don't think I'll have a change, and I hope I don't. I'm not, and I'm not going to change for you. I'm not going to change for pe people. I will change because I feel it's the way to change or the right thing to do when I change. Other than that, uh, you know, I just think life is great. Uh, I want you to have a great life. I want you to make good choices. I want you to pass the word what we do here. And you can enjoy the cooking show. I know that. And have a great day, man. Stay safe. Make good choices. And I'll see you next time.